This podcast contains descriptions of violence against children and adult language and is not suitable for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Suffer the Little Children, the true crime podcast giving voices back to the victims of child abuse and shining a harsh spotlight on the parents, guardians, and caretakers who silence them. I'm your host, Lane, and this is episode 128, Davina and Thaddeus Saran. On July 15, 2020, Berseda and Sukjender Saran reported their two-year-old special needs son, Thaddeus, missing from the family's new home in Madera, California. When the parents stopped cooperating with the police early in the investigation, Thaddeus's parents came under suspicion, which only intensified after the public learned that the couple had another child, four-month-old Davina, who died five years earlier. After Thaddeus's charred remains were found miles from home, Berseda and Sukjender were arrested. This is the story of two beautiful siblings who never had the chance to meet during their time on Earth. It's also the story of a community that came together first to find a missing little boy, then to ensure he would never be forgotten. This is the tragic story of Davina and Thaddeus Saran. It's hard to believe this is my first regular episode since September. I hope you all enjoyed my recent miniseries, Groomed to Die, The Kenzia Children, which was a massive undertaking and incredibly rewarding. Now that I've returned to my regular format, I plan to go back to releasing episodes weekly on Wednesdays. Of course, that all depends on how my brain cooperates. Since I had COVID in October, I've suffered from some very annoying neurological symptoms, like issues with memory and concentration, which makes research very difficult. If I have any issues keeping up with my former weekly pace, I'll let you know. I also plan to go back to releasing Patreon-exclusive bonus minisodes about once a month. Those are available to patrons pledging $10 or more per month at patreon.com slash stlcpod. On that note, let's get into today's story, which I first covered on Suffer the Little Children blog in July of 2020. Studies have shown that children with disabilities are abused at a disproportionately higher rate than other children. These children may be more vulnerable, according to some researchers, due to the societal stigma of the disability rather than the nature of the disability itself, suggesting that children with disabilities may be perceived as less valuable. According to PreventChildAbuse.org, families with children with disabilities can experience additional stressors, including feeling unprepared to handle the care of a disabled child, including acceptance of that child as being different having financial or time limits stretched as additional medical or educational activities are suggested, and lacking necessary social supports or networks to work through the many concerns and situations that arise in providing care for this child and the rest of the family. All of these can result in increased vulnerability to abuse. A child with difficult-to-handle behavior patterns or communication difficulties may become a target for physical abuse. Children who are unable to communicate their needs may experience greater instances of neglect. We've seen the tragic consequences of this lack of regard for children with disabilities in many prior cases. We've heard time and time again about the severe abuse of children with either confirmed or purported learning, behavioral, or physical difficulties. Off the top of my head, I can think of a number of such kids whose stories I've told on the podcast, like Emmerich Osuna, Heaven Watkins, Josias Marquez, Thomas Valva, Shelley Ward, Dante Mullenix, Lucas Call, and too many others. It boils down to this. Children with special needs are extra susceptible to abuse by those who should be their fiercest advocates and protectors. This is the story of two of those children. On July 15, 2020, 
Briseida and Sukhjinder Saran reported their son, two-year-old Thaddeus, missing from the family's home, which was located in the 800 block of South C Street in Madera, California, where the family had only lived for about two weeks. According to what the Sarans told police, they put Thaddeus to bed around 10 p.m. on the evening of July 14th, but by the time they awoke at 8.30 the next morning, Thaddeus was gone. Flyers were posted around the neighborhood and the surrounding areas, and the Saran family offered a $5,000 reward for information leading to Thaddeus's return. Thaddeus Nolan Saran, who was described as being two feet tall and weighing 30 pounds, was last seen wearing a red shirt and Spider-Man pants over a diaper. Especially concerning was the fact that Thaddeus had special needs. He was born premature and required a feeding tube and special care. He was nonverbal and, having just learned to walk, primarily crawled to get around. No Amber Alert was issued because there was no information about a possible vehicle. From the beginning, this story was all too reminiscent of two-year-old Noah Tomlin, whose mother reported him missing from their Hampton, Virginia mobile home in June of 2019. Noah was thought to be autistic and also had a hard time getting around, so it immediately seemed unlikely that he left the family home of his own accord. I told Noah's story way back in episode 10 of this podcast, and as soon as I heard about Thaddeus' disappearance, Noah was the first one I thought of. Initially, the city of Madera Police Department said they were treating Thaddeus' disappearance as a possible abduction. They requested assistance from the FBI and the U.S. Marshal Service, so it was immediately clear they were taking the disappearance of this precious little boy seriously. City of Madera Police Chief Dino Lawson called Thaddeus' disappearance a parent's worst nightmare. Time isn't on our side right now. It could be that he got out of the house. It could be that he was abducted. Everything is on the table. We're looking at everything, and we're leaving no stone unturned. On Friday, July 17th, police announced they were scaling back the search after they had scoured every inch of the neighborhood and turned up exactly zero clues on what may have happened to little Thaddeus. The Saran family, as I mentioned, had only been in the neighborhood for a few weeks when they reported Thaddeus missing. Next-door neighbor Ermolanto Espinoza told an action news reporter in Spanish, It's all strange. I don't think the boy was ever here. I think the alleged abduction was elsewhere because I never saw anything. Ermolanto told the reporter that he gets up for work in the morning at 3 a.m. and that the evening of Thaddeus' purported disappearance, he heard nothing overnight. When I was going to work, the lights inside were turned on two or three times. Maybe he was sleeping, but someone was up. I'll pause here for a quick sponsor break. Before long, it started to become clear that Thaddeus' parents, Mother Perseda Saran and Father Sukhjinder Saran, had something to hide. For one thing, they never appeared on the news, television, or any other public media to plead for their son's safe return. In fact, their names were not even released during the first ten days of the investigation. Then, on Tuesday, July 21, 2020, six days after Thaddeus was reported missing, the City of Madera Police Department released a statement on Facebook, saying, The Madera Police Department and our law enforcement partners continue to investigate the disappearance of Thaddeus Saran. We are looking into a variety of tips and leads and want the public to know that we appreciate their help in this case. Please know that there are many aspects of this investigation that we cannot comment on publicly at this time, but we will not stop looking for Thaddeus. Unfortunately, Thaddeus' parents stopped cooperating early on in the investigation. We believe their assistance in this case would be helpful. We are hopeful that they will resume cooperating with Madera Police Department detectives and help us to locate Thaddeus. Madera Police Lieutenant Josiah Arnold spoke to the media the same day, saying, This is still categorized as a missing person case. Of course, knowing Thaddeus' uh, medical problems, we're extremely concerned about him. But we will continue to search um, what, whether he's alive or whether or not he's passed away. We won't stop searching for him. The evening the statement was released, community members rallied at Courthouse Park in Madera in a public vigil to pray for Thaddeus' safe return. Many members of the community had been conducting searches of their own over the previous week. The missing boy's parents did not participate in any of those searches. Vigil attendees were asked to wear red or blue in honor of Thaddeus's hero, Spider-Man. 
Sandeep Saran, a second cousin of Thaddeus's father, told ABC 30 that she never met Thaddeus, but she insisted on helping with the search. The last I've heard of Thaddeus's parents, uh, our kids went to school together. And once school is out, I haven't had any contact with them. They're really private, and I don't know why they're not uh, speaking out. Sandeep told Your Central Valley, We just want to bring him home safe and alive. The Saran family appreciates every effort everyone is making. We know as much as the media what the police department is saying, so we are all in support of bringing Thaddeus home. It was at this point that things took an even more sinister turn. According to Lieutenant Arnold, Brasada and Sukhjinder Saran had a daughter who died in 2015, although he did not provide further details other than to say that the girl's death was investigated and the case remains open. A little digging revealed that Thaddeus's sister, Davina Nazareth Saran, was born on April 14, 2015, and died on August 16, 2015. Reportedly, Brasada lay down for a nap, and five hours later, she awoke to find her daughter not breathing. Reportedly, Davina was found to have bruises and burns and died as a result of blocked airways. The baby, who had numerous health issues due to being born prematurely, was ultimately cremated. On Thursday, July 23, 2020, the family's lawyer released a statement to news stations saying that the Sarans were cooperative until the tone of the authorities changed. Attorney Roger T. Nuttall wrote, They were cooperative until law enforcement became overtly accusatory. These are good people. I would venture to say they weren't involved in illegal behavior in regards to Thaddeus. Mr. Nuttall insisted that police stopped cooperating with the family when they were told the family would not speak with them without their attorney. Regarding the 2015 death of Davina Saran, Mr. Nuttall told reporters that the infant was also born premature and died from sudden infant death syndrome, or SIDS. He represented Brasada Saran in that case as well. Mr. Nuttall said, No charges were filed, and we were able to show, frankly, that there was no reason for them to be held liable for anything, and in fact, they were able to reunite with the family. That was a baby that was premature, and she was at Valley Children's for several months before she came home. She was in a rather very fragile condition. It was one of those crib deaths. After confirming that Madera County Child Protective Services was involved in the investigation into Davina's death, Mr. Nuttall said, it was a very, very awful time for them. The mother, who I represented, I think she was with the child every day at Valley Children's. Brasada's mother, Imelda de la O, spoke in Spanish as she told ABC 30 of her grandson. He was happy all the time. He was very joyful despite the fact he didn't walk. He crawled. But he was very happy. My heart cannot believe it. I don't believe it. About her daughter and son-in-law's involvement, she said, They both surprised us, the whole family. If you ask the whole family, the family will tell you the same. Imelda described her daughter as a woman who had a lot of fun with her kids, played with them, dedicated a lot of time to them, worried for them, and I don't know in what moment they lost themselves to do this. I don't know. Honestly don't know in what moment this all happened. When the reporter asked about the death of her granddaughter, Davina, Imelda declined to comment, saying the investigation was closed. Evidently, According to a government source speaking on condition of anonymity, the Sarans were also investigated by CPS in 2019 in regard to Thaddeus, although the details of that case are not clear. It was closed in January of 2020, and Thaddeus remained with his parents. Madera Police Lieutenant Josiah Arnold told the Fresno Bee he could not go into detail about prior cases. I can't comment on CPS cases other than to say we are aware of prior incidents involving this family and are reviewing those cases. In a case like this, we look at every piece of information we have and evaluate everything for relevance. In 2017, the father of another of Brasada's children filed court documents requesting visitation with his child. In the request, he wrote that his son and his siblings were removed by CPS about three years ago. No charges were filed against her. I feel like if she can get away with that situation, she's capable of getting away with other stuff as well. His request was ultimately denied. On Thursday, July 23rd, there was a terrible but not altogether unexpected bombshell in the case. In a news conference, Chief Dino Lawson told gathered reporters that, around 9.15 on Thursday morning, 
the remains of a child between the ages of two and three were found by cadaver dogs in an agricultural fire pit close to an almond orchard west of Madeira, near the intersection of Road 21 and Avenue 14. The same day, Chief Lawson gave a press conference. Our detectives have continued to work this case um, from the onset and on stop uh, with the help of the FBI, Cal OES, the U.S. Marshals, uh, the Madera Sheriff's Department, and Madera County Probation. Since the detectives uh, were conducting follow-up and gaining additional investigative leads, which led them to an area outside the city, city limits in the county, just west of the city. We uh, contacted our allied agencies, the ones I just named, to have them assist us in a search of the area with their cadaver dogs. This morning about 9.15, we discovered the remains of an infant in that location. The infant is deceased. The age is approximately two to three years old. Um, we cannot at this time confirm that it's little Thaddeus until test results return. Uh, to confirm that or uh, direct us otherwise, but all our investigative leads and everything, will, it's a very strong possibility that it is Little Thaddeus. Um, this is an ongoing investigation, so I want to apologize right up front that there's going to probably a lot of answers that you're looking for to your questions that I won't be able to answer. I do want to um, send thank, thank you out to our community and uh, members of our community. They, they, they are just the epitome of what it is to be a Madaren. Um, from, from the beginning, they organized on their own search parties to look for Thaddeus, along with the police department and other agencies. They provided resources to the police department and the officers and other groups so that they can continue their searching. Um, this is not the end. We are continuing with our investigation, and we are very hopeful that within the next few days that our investigative uh, revelations that we're looking forward to having here um, will lead us to some very positive results. So with that, I'd like to thank you, and if you have anything that I can't answer, I would. You said you found the body and remains. How bad does it deteriorate? How long do you think you've been out in the field? And again, I apologize. Like I said, it's an ongoing investigation. We really don't want to reveal any of that right now. Chief, how heartbreaking is it for you? I mean, we all, some of us have kids. But from the beginning, this is one of those very special cases um, that really tugged at everybody's heart, every member of this community. This is a tough one. You know, I, I've been in this business for 34 years, and I'll tell you, it's affected me. But but you know what? I think we're real close, and, and that we can bring some justice and a, a conclusion to this, hopefully soon. Are the parents the lead suspects at this point, or are they um, some of you guys are thinking may have been involved in this? Like I had said from the beginning, everything is on the table. Nobody's been ruled out at this point. Um, and that's how we're going to continue to handle this case. Are the, where are the other children that the family has uh, right now? Are they with CPS? Uh, they were turned over to the custody of CPS, yes. I'll pause here for another sponsor break. Another vigil was held for Thaddeus on the evening of July 23, 2020, attended by heartbroken community members who came together to pray for the little boy. An autopsy for Thaddeus was scheduled for the following day at 2 p.m. On Friday, July 24, 2020, Madera police announced another major development in the case when they confirmed the arrest of 42-year-old Sukjinder Singh Saran and 29-year-old Briseida Guadalupe Saran on suspicion of murder. The two were taken into custody early that morning at the home of Bersada's family on Winter Way, 
which is approximately four miles from the site where Thaddeus' remains were found. This, neighbors say, is where Sukhjinder, Prasada, and their four children lived until they moved into the house on C Street about two weeks before Thaddeus went missing. Weirdly, according to ABC Action News, the family home on Winter Way is right next door to the house where, in 2008, 18-year-old Krista Ray Pike was stabbed and beaten to death with a barbell over a romantic rivalry. Also, in the house directly across the street, in April of 2020, 35-year-old Megan Olson was allegedly shot to death by her husband, 33-year-old Jeffrey Olson, who was also the father of Megan's two children and who reportedly admitted his actions to the police, although he has not yet faced trial. Chief Lawson gave a press conference on the day of the Saran's arrests. We have an update on the Thaddeus Saran case. This morning, at approximately 7.12, our detective unit served an arrest warrant in the city of Madeira. The arrest warrant was for the parents of Thaddeus Saran. Cindy Singh Saran, the father. Berseda Guadalupe Saran, Thaddeus's mother, were both taken into custody and arrested for murder. Our case is continuing. We will continue to work the case. But as of right now, there's some justice for little Thaddeus. Madeira PD detectives have worked tirelessly through this case to come to this moment in time today. And again, I want to compliment the efforts of Cal OES, the Madera County Sheriff's Department, Madera County Probation, Chowchilla PD, and of course, our partners um, that are here today from the FBI and the District Attorney's Office. I can't stress the partnership and the outstanding uh, help and the resources that the, the FBI has brought to this case. So with that, uh, Assistant Special Agent Robert Tripp. Thank you, Chief. When a child goes missing, the FBI has no higher priority than bringing that child home. For the past two weeks, it has been the FBI's duty and our privilege to assist the Madeira Police Department by providing FBI resources in support of their investigation. I want to offer my most sincere condolences to Thaddeus' siblings and to his extended family. I want to commend the Madeira Police Department for their absolutely outstanding partnership and the tenacity of their investigators and their investigation. And I want to thank the community of Madeira for doing so much in the past two weeks to help us bring Thaddeus home. Thank you. Thank you, Assistant Special Agent Tripp. I would also like to thank our community. We have, I've said it before and I'll say it again, we have an outstanding community here in Madeira. There's a group of mothers that assembled search parties and went out and looked for little Thaddeus. This community's heart has been broken over this case. Uh, but we've all pulled together as Madeirans for one special goal, and that was to bring resolution to this case. My heart goes out to Thaddeus. My heart goes out to his brother and his sisters. And today, we will have some justice for them. I also would like to introduce our district attorney, Sally Moreno, who uh, the Madeira Police Department will be turning the case over to. Um, and with that, Sally. I'll just say it's great to have the relationship that we have with the Madeira Police Department. Um, we have very open communications and we look forward to uh, receiving the case and doing the appropriate evaluation and uh, taking it forward uh, as quickly and as efficiently as we can, again, to continue getting justice for Thaddeus. The other siblings are doing well. Um, they, are, they are currently under CPS protection. During the press conference, Chief Lawson confirmed that at the time of her arrest, Perseda was eight months pregnant. She was given a full medical examination before she was booked into Madera County Jail. Roger Nuttall, the Saran's attorney, also held a press conference on Friday in front of his law office, during which he addressed Davina's death. Her mother, particularly, since she went working, visited with the child every day, hovered over that baby, loved that baby. They brought the baby home, and um, I'm not sure how long she was there before she she died. And there was an investigation on that, and 
Brasada Sran uh, loved that baby, and we just assumed that it was sudden infant death syndrome. The baby, because the baby was not a healthy baby. The medical records which we had during that investigation suggested that she was in particularly difficult condition, and as I say, very fragile. And ultimately, that was closed, that case, and there was no further activity. And we were grateful for that, although the couple remained certainly very sad over the loss of this baby. But then Mrs. Sran had to go through a, um, not a custody case, but a, it was a case, a dependency case, they call it, where during the, the investigation of the loss of the baby, um, her son from a previous marriage was removed from the home. He was about eight years old. And so we had to deal with this um, dependency case, and the little boy wanted to return home to his mother and, and his stepfather. And that lasted for several months, and ultimately we prevailed. And the family was reunited. And despite the grief over the loss of the baby, they were very grateful to be back together and presented as a, a truly a healthy, uh, happy family. And I, I was unaware that she, she gave birth to Thaddeus, who likewise had certain health problems. I, I got to liking them because I got to know them real well. So, when this happened, simply when the boy disappeared, I was shocked. But knowing them, I'm very shocked and surprised that they would be accused of uh, doing something to their, their little boy. I mean, they've been very distraught over the past few weeks. And uh, I mean, the mother, she's pregnant. She's late in another pregnancy, and uh, from what I understand, she had been in tears most of the time since uh, Thaddeus disappeared. And so that's really my take on it. And in, in, in saying that, I don't know much. I have no, I, I'm unaware of any evidence that would um, support the charges and the arrest. I know in these kinds of cases, uh, there's a potential for a conflict of interest when you're representing two people. And so it's unlikely that I'll represent both just because of ethical considerations and practical considerations attendant to the pro legal process. Based upon what I know of the prior case, I would be surprised if that if that had any viability here, tr truly. But who knows, you know, it's not my decision. And uh, I, I just don't think that would be appropriate. Have you spoken to either of them since their arrest this morning? I spoke with um, Mr. Sran. He, he how called... Did he, he, like, did, how did he react? Or did oh, he was very distraught, you know, for... But I said, you got to hang in there. and. He, he called me from the jail, and we spoke for just a few minutes because I didn't want to talk about the case. He did tell me that his wife was taken to the hospital in uh, Madeira to be checked out because of the nature of her pregnancy. During the conference, Mr. Nuttall said that Sukjinder was a hard-working truck driver and that Berseda worked part-time so she could take care of the couple's children. He also said he would attend a dependency hearing the following Monday for the couple surviving three children, who included a 12-year-old boy and two girls who he thought were around five, six, or seven. Mr. Nuttall mentioned that he held the news conference partly to counter the Madeira Police Department's claims that his clients were not cooperating with the investigation, adding, Their family was getting death threats based upon the media having attributed that to law enforcement. 
members of Thaddeus's family created a makeshift memorial near the area where the remains were found. Community members brought tokens of their love and support for Thaddeus to the site, including toys, candles, and balloons. On Friday morning, family members gathered at the memorial for a private vigil. After the arrests were announced, other members of the Saran family expressed their shock. Sandeep Saran said she did not expect her cousin's arrest, saying he was a really nice guy, quiet, humble. I don't know what happened in life for this to happen. I can't fathom. I can't understand. She mentioned the family's gratitude for the help they received from the community, including those who helped with the organizing of the searches and the vigils. We're just grateful. We're grateful for law enforcement. They put in a lot of work. Sandeep and her husband were trying to have Thaddeus's sisters and brother placed in their home. It's not clear where the children ended up. Formal charges against Sukhjinder and Braseda were expected to be filed the following week. Reportedly, authorities planned to look into the situation surrounding Sukhjinder's previous divorce. Court records detailed a seven-year court battle over child support, as well as illuminating a violent incident that took place afterward. In 2017, Sukhjinder's ex-wife called the police after a custody exchange, saying that Brisada assaulted her and Sukhjinder tried to coerce a child into lying about the incident. According to hospital records, the woman suffered bruising on the left side of her head, as well as a broken nose. No one was arrested for the reported assault. The woman also reported that Brisada sent her a series of threatening text messages, including threats such as, I'll kill you and your family. Brisada had her own family court troubles. According to Madera County court records, the county DCSS won a child support judgment against her for an unspecified amount in September of 2016. From what I could tell, it appears that one or more of Brisada's children may have been in the custody of a family member, at least for some time. Both Sukhjinder and Brisada Saran initially entered pleas of not guilty to the charges against them. Both were held on a $1 million bond. An online obituary lists the date of death for Thaddeus, who was born on May 6, 2018, as July 23, 2020, the day his remains were found. Thaddeus, like his older sister, was eventually cremated. The results of his autopsy have never been officially released, and Thaddeus' cause of death is known only as unspecified homicide. On July 28, 2020, dozens of people gathered in Madeira to celebrate Thaddeus's short life after Fresno artist Omar Super Huerta completed painting the first of two planned murals dedicated to Thaddeus, this one on the side of Don Tony's money transfers on Yosemite Avenue. Super told ABC 30, I hope that this is, could be a place for them to come and if they wanted to drop off flowers or, or just, uh, you know, do a prayer for him. Another local business, The Tint Shop, created a large canvas for a second mural, this one portable, which would be dedicated to Thaddeus. The canvas would be placed outside their building. Owner Carmen Flores said, I hope that the baby, wherever he is in heaven, knows that maybe if he didn't feel loved in his home, he has a whole community that loves him. At the vigil, attendees lit candles and left flowers and balloons in memory of Thaddeus while a band played nearby. Erica Campo, from a group of local moms calling themselves Justice for Thaddeus, helped arrange the painting of the murals. She told the reporter, We need to be the voice for baby Thaddeus. The support of the entire community, like, it's really brought this whole town together, and it really makes me proud to be part of this community. In another beautiful tribute to Thaddeus, the Madera City Council met on the evening of Wednesday, August 5, 2020, and agreed to move forward with Mayor Andy Medellin's proposal to name a playground after Thaddeus. Mayor Medellin said, With COVID and people on edge, in spite of all that, Thaddeus brought us together as a community. At long last, on Friday, September 10, 2021, the Madera County District Attorney's Office announced that 30-year-old Briseida Saran had also been charged with murder and child abuse in the 2015 death of her infant daughter, Davina. 
she and her husband continued to await trial in the Madera County Jail, each on a $1 million bond. In the meantime, on April 26, 2022, the mural artist Super posted on Facebook that a vandal caught tagging or painting graffiti on his mural of Thaddeus was tackled by several community members and swiftly arrested by the Madera PD. On June 27, 2022, after what the district attorney described as a lot of negotiating, Sukjinder and Briseida attended a plea hearing in Madera County Court. Cameras were not allowed inside the courtroom for the hearing. Reportedly, Briseida did not show any emotion as she pleaded guilty to a charge of voluntary manslaughter for each of her children, as well as one count of mutilating human remains and two counts of child abuse for Davina and Thaddeus's deaths. Sukjinder pleaded guilty to a single count of voluntary manslaughter in connection with Thaddeus's death. When the couple's expected sentences were announced, it felt like a slap in the face to anyone who had followed the story. Briseida would serve 28 years and 8 months, while Sukjinder would serve just 11 years. A heartbreaking detail is that no one attended the hearing to represent or show support for Davina and Thaddeus. After the hearing, the Madera County District Attorney, Sally Moreno, said outside the courtroom, We have a solid firm 28 and two-thirds years on Briseida and, and 11 years uh, on Sukjinder, and they'll serve that time. That's the horrific part of this crime. The people who should have been speaking for them and should have been protecting them are instead, in this case, the people who killed them. So Madera will remember him um, and, and his sister Davina as well. By that time, Sukjinder had a new attorney, Edmund Gill, who represented the couple at the hearing because Briseida's attorney couldn't be present. Mr. Gill told ABC 30, I'm not thrilled about it, but at the same time... We- Uh, we understand the risk involved, and so that's why we took the plea. And I think that 28 years and five months has begun, you know, months and months ago. She's already started, and she's on her way to um, have a good understanding, to truly accept responsibility in her heart with God, her relationship between herself and God. Um, I believe all that to be true. I know that's true of Sekinder. The same day, D.A. Moreno made the following brief statement on her office's Facebook page. I'm Sally Moreno. I'm the elected district attorney here in Madera, California. As you can see by our nearby post, today in Madera Superior Court, the parents of Davina and Thaddeus Sran accepted responsibility for their killings and they'll be going to prison. It's always tragic to see parents killing their children, particularly tragic and heinous. Although it can seem like no amount of time is enough, Today there was justice for both Davina and Thaddeus Sran. I don't know. That statement felt to me like the DA was trying to justify what the public undoubtedly saw as ridiculously paltry sentences. However, the DA had said in the past, and of course it is true by law, that they are limited in pressing charges and prosecuting cases to the facts that they can realistically prove. Moreno said that both convicted killers would have to serve at least 85% of their prison time. On December 10, 2022, the city of Madera memorialized Thaddeus with the dedication of the Centennial Park playground in his memory. Members of the family and the community gathered at the John Wells Youth Center for the dedication. During the ceremony, new Madera Mayor Santos Garcia said, It will be a constant reminder of the precious life of Thaddeus Saran and a pledge as a city that we will never forget him. An emotional police chief, Dino Lawson, said, you look at the picture and if you just look at that beautiful little face the life that is there it just touches you in the heart now Thaddeus will touch and be able to play with all the children of Madeira every day he will be there in the playground everyone will be able to stop by and see the beautiful memorial a plaque bearing Thaddeus's picture was placed at the park, reading, This space dedicated to Thaddeus Saran. May 6, 2018 to July 23, 2020. A small life walked by leaving footprints on our hearts forever. 44-year-old Sukjinder Singh Saran, CDCR inmate number BU5372, is serving his sentence in the California State Prison Facility in Wasco, California. His parole eligibility date is listed as June of 2028. 
Berseda Guadalupe Saran, CDCR inmate number WG9795, who is now 31 years old, is incarcerated in the Central California Women's Facility in Chowchilla. She will be eligible for parole in March of 2040. This case is incredibly frustrating for a number of reasons. We still don't know, and may never know, what happened to Thaddeus, what his parents did to him, why they did it, who moved his body and set him on fire, and why, and the answers to countless other questions. Did Perseda and Sukjinder just have no patience for children with health issues? Is that why their two special needs children ended up dead? Do any of their surviving children have special needs? So far, we just don't have many answers. Very little has been said about who Thaddeus was as a person, let alone Davina, who was just too little when she died to have developed many of the personality traits she would have started showing as she grew older. Regardless, we can't let these two sweet babies be forgotten. They may never have met on this earth, but I hope they're together somewhere now. My sources for this episode were ABC 30, the State of California Office of the Attorney General's website, Crime Online, People, The Daily Beast, Dignity Memorial, YourCentralValley.com, Facebook, The Fresno Bee, Fox 26 News, PreventChildAbuse.org, KMOV4, Crime Voice, The Madera County District Attorney's Office, The Madera Police Department, and Court Records. That's it for this week. Join me next week for another episode. If you like the show, please follow or subscribe to Suffer the Little Children on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, Spreaker, Pandora, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast listening app. And please leave me a five-star rating and a positive review on your favorite podcast platform. Visit the website at SufferTheLittleChildrenPod.com. You can support the show by visiting patreon.com slash stlcpod, where you can become a patron for rewards ranging from a shout-out by name on the show to bonus content and exclusive gifts. You can also support the show at ko-fi.com slash stlcpod. Follow the podcast on Facebook and Instagram at Suffer the Little Children Pod and on TikTok at stlcpod. View photos related to today's episode on Facebook. For more stories like the one you heard today, visit SufferTheLittleChildrenBlog.com. This podcast is researched, written, hosted, edited, and produced by Lane. Intro theme music is by DreamNote Music, and all music for the show is licensed from AudioJungle.net. For more information about preventing or reporting child abuse, visit ChildHelp.org or call your area's child abuse hotline. And remember, if you see something, say something.